Hey guys, Jay from Intuitive Arts here. Today I've got a basic tutorial on how to get yourself a really good and effective Cinema 4D scene. It'll show you the basics of how to get yourself lighting and how to get yourself a really great background. Um, well, let's get straight into it. Uh, first of all, you want to go at the top here and you'll see an icon with four arrows uh, pointing outwards. You want to hold and click and get yourself a floor and you want to get yourself a background. Now what you want to do next is you just want to select these two, right click them, go Cinema 4D tags and click Compositing. Now what you like, if we render it out at the moment, you'll see that we have this really sharp edge here. Now that that's not really professional and it's not going to leave a good look on your final product. So what you want to do is the two tags that you've just created over here and here, you want to select them both and down the bottom you'll see compositing background you just want to make sure that that's ticked now if we go look at it now after we've uh, done that you'll see that there's no sharp line and the scene's pretty much set up so after that um, we'll just get a test object we'll go here we'll get ourselves a cube I mean a sphere um, hit T on your keyboard we'll resize it make it smaller hit E again uh, drag it up a bit and we'll just make ourselves a little material. Uh, I think I'll go, I'll untick specular first, I'll go to color. Um, a red is always a very good color to go with, it's very vibrant. Uh, you want to go to reflection now, make sure that that's ticked. You want to just make sure your brightness is around about 10 to, oh, we'll keep it at 15. Our texture we want is Fresnel and our mix strength will have it up to about 20. Now we'll just go ahead and drag that onto our on our sphere. Now right now if we render it it's gonna come out like this. Now it's not very attractive so we're just gonna dress this up a bit. Now first of all we wanna get a light so um, normally what you would use is a light over here but I'm not a fan of that and lights over here aren't the best. So what I'd recommend is going to Grayscale Gorilla and getting a um, buying his HDRI kit, I'm pretty sure it's called. It's about $99 and it's definitely worth it. Um, but if you can't afford that and you're in a tight budget, a great way of making a softbox is uh, is what I'm about to show you. You want to go into your where your cube is, click and hold and create yourself a plane. Now you're probably thinking, oh what's a plane going to do? Well, this plane is going to act as our softbox. Obviously, we're not going to model it like other softboxes, but it's still very effective. So after you've created your plane, you just want to create a new material. You want to go tick off uh, specular, go to color, and make sure that you don't have that gray, but it's a nice bright white. And then you want to go luminance, make sure that's ticked. And at the brightness, you want to go 250. Now... You do, after you've done that, you want to just drag that onto your little uh, plane, then just drag the plane up. Now, this uh, this is mostly effective if you have, under your render settings, ambient inclusion and global illumination uh, selected. This will give you very, very good reflective looks and very good bright lights. Now, also what you want to do is go. you want to go to plane, you want to copy and paste that, and you just want to rotate it 90 degrees right there and hit E again you want to drag it backwards and you want to drag it back down so it's all covering uh, the front so the lights gonna cover the front of your sphere now if we go down look at it and just take a quick render you're gonna see that it's nice and bright and it's gonna you know that this is gonna be good now, if you've got a slow computer, not, not something that can handle something too big, well, I would recommend taking global illumination off, as, as you can see, it can take a while. Now, you can see there's very good reflections and all that going, but to get the best, you'll have to customize your render settings, which I'll go over in another tutorial. But uh, the, using these planes is one way of creating them. Another way of creating great lights is to use, a, a use spheres. spheres. What you want to do is you want to create yourself a, another sphere, drag it upwards, and you just want to decrease the size of it. Then after you've done that, you want to go MoGraph, you want to go Cloner Object, 
oh, I've just clicked the wrong thing. You want to go MoGraph, you want to go Cloner Object. Now you want to drag the sphere as a uh, into the cloner. Now under the cloner you want to change the mode into a radial one. You just want to drag that upwards and you want to drag the count bigger and radius just make that a little bit bigger. So it's like so. Now you just want to hit R and you just want to rotate it this way. And it'll rotate about 95 to 90 degrees. I'd, I'd say leave it at 90. 90 is pretty good. Uh, it's a little bit too big for me, so I'm going to go into the sphere and just drag it down. That's about great. That's pretty good. Hit E again. And you want to move it upwards. And I think we'll add a few more spheres. And you just want to drag your luminance material that we've made onto them. And now uh, just drag it a bit down. And this should give you a pretty good lighting. Now we'll just go ahead and render this and see how it comes out. As you can see, it's giving like a kind of a damp, damp illumination, and you can also see the reflection is working pretty good. Now it depend, it really depends on what the project is of depending on which lighting you want to use. Um, I would normally go with the planes, but if you feel that this is working better for you, then by all means go ahead and use that. Now, that's about it for today's tutorial. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you support what I do, please don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and like the video. Um, this has been Jay from Intuitive Arts, and thank you.